Somebody said to me, John, oh, you're such a motivational speaker. I said, never call me a motivational speaker. I do not ever want to be emotional. I can't imagine anything worse because if I'm a motivational speaker, when I leave the room, the motivation walks out the door and you're left on your own in a puddle of adrenaline, okay? I don't want to motivate you. I want to liberate you. I want to share some ideas with you that will change your life from the inside out so that when I leave, you'll still have those ideas. They'll be with you for the rest of your life. I'll be gone, you'll, you'll have forgotten who I am or that we ever met, but you'll never forget those big ideas. It's ideas are gonna change you, not somebody trying to motivate you. Rikers Island is, as you probably know, the largest penal colony in the world and it's an in, infamous place out there. I, I think they've got on on any day they've got approximately 17,000 people and so I went out there to teach public speaking and on the first day. I said listen uh, listen you guys we've got an hour to fill in perhaps you could each stand up and uh, give me the story of my life, as if it were a speech. Well, I'd asked that by accident, but the stories that came were amazing. They were amazing. They were shocking. Every person in that class had been subjected to such brutal treatment when they were growing up. Every person in that class had been neglected, beaten, had had a rotten, terrible childhood. I saw it with my own eyes, and there was, there was one man in that class who stuck with me completely. I think his name was Dudley, and uh, African-American guy, young guy, and he said that the person in his life that he loved was his grandmother. She was the only good thing in his life. He would come home, she would look after me, they would bully me in the street, but she would go out there, she'd look after me. She said, I, he, I just loved her. He said, my father was gone, my mother was gone. The only person in my life was my grandmother. And then one day I came home from school. I was on my way home from school, thinking would I be able to get there before, you know, before they beat me up again, or would she be coming for me? And I saw her up the street and she was coming towards me. But this time, they had thrown gasoline all over her and they'd set fire to my grandmother. Her hair was on fire and as she approached me, she fell down and died. That was the story of his life. It was, it was amazing. So in that moment, on that day, <clears throat> I thought, okay, we talk about how people have been harmed growing up. And we, okay, fine, you know, this or that, this thing goes wrong, something happens in your life which, you know, is a big deal to you. But these deals were really, they were dreadful. And I saw now, the, and that was every person in the class, the damage inflicted. I thought, emotional harm has been done to these people. They've been harmed in a terrible way, and you can't get there. So that was the first thing I saw. And then, oddly enough, the next class, I'd said to them to give a speech on the philosophy or the person who most influenced my life. To my surprise, all except one person, all except one member of the class chose the same person. There wasn't anybody who chose a philosophy. And the person they chose was, was my mother. They, I said my mother, my, my mother was the person who influenced it, she did this, my mother did this, my mother was the hero, one after the other. And the man who didn't say it was his mother said it was his grandmother because his mother wasn't around. And suddenly in that moment, when I got to the end of that day, I saw there wasn't a single person in that class that had a father at home. When I went into a Brit prison for itself on the first day, these guys were sitting there with their arms crossed and their faces were grim. And they looked like a bunch of scary guys. They, they really did look, a, look like a bunch of scary criminals, which is what they were. And I looked at them and I thought, I don't know, got to break the ice here. I walked up to each person and I said, I'm John. Get you, 
I'm, I shook hands with every person and I, and I smiled. When I smiled at them, they smiled at me and suddenly the big scary guy went away. Suddenly the guy was smiling. Suddenly everyone in the room was happy. And I saw if you reach out to people, you can change them instantly. Wow. I went in the, I could set my own class. Well, I'm, I'm going in there and having the conversations that I wished someone had had with me. I'd like to be talking about race, I'd like to be talking about the big issues, I'd like to be talking about all this stuff. And so would these guys. They loved it. They, we, we can pass through our lives with not, never, having the, the, never having the conversations that we should have. People are starved for conversations about the big ideas of life. What am I doing here? Here we are adrift on the star. What is the journey for? Why is someone's life working out and someone's isn't? You know, all these things, all these things happening. I, I was in, I was teaching in the prisons when the World Trade Center fell down. I stood on Fifth Avenue and watched it fall down. You can take all the good things and the bad things that happened in that journey and fit them to tell a story which almost is an archetypal story of how how the man from Mars, being me, goes into a prison and I go in there not knowing anything really. If I'd gone in there having a degree in criminology, I don't think I would have been, I wouldn't have learned as much. You know, I don't think I would have learned because I would have come in with, with some sort of an attitude, but I went in with a t totally open mind and, and also I had the, big advantage that um, I had two great advantages that other people didn't have. A, I was a juvenile delinquent and B, I'd ha I had ha had a life ending stutter, so uh, which uh, which completely never goes away anyway, it's always there a little bit. But um, those t those problems, some people see them as problems, they turn out to be gifts. Mm -hmm.